You know, this was a this was a weird topic because I'm going to talk about this same person later on in this we're going to be talking about him, about this man later on to, in this show but Deion Sanders oh, Lord. I actually agree with him oh I was shocked at that that's crazy cuz I was ready I to actually a, a one component okay the Miami Hurricanes last year had a recruit named Pormani McLean Mm-hmm. If you don't know who Kamar- Kermani McLean was, he was the number one or number one or two player. I think he was number two player in the nation, number one corner in the nation, and he was committed to Miami for some time. And the day, the the week of signing day, <clears throat> it's when um, Dion got hired. Pretty much like within that time period, just within a couple of weeks of that, mm-hmm. by you know the last that I think it was that month before by Colorado. Yeah. And he was he basically pulled what he pulled with Travis Hunter when he took yep. Travis Hunter from Florida State and got him to go to Jackson State. Now, Travis Hunter was a different type of kid. You can see that Travis Hunter is a real down to earth guy, real chill dude. Um, not he seems just very nice. He seem he actually seems like he's still a kid in his mind, and he is. Yep. Like, I don't even remember when he went to the, they went to the Lakers game, him and Shador, and Travis Hunter looked like he was at Disney World. I don't think with Travis Disney, Hunter with the Disney how, World hat. Huh? He's, probably just, he's just one of those kids. I don't think he realized how good he is. And that, yeah. He's a hot and, commodity sometimes. He, he's like, while, Shad, while, Shador, while Shador is sitting there acting like he's like, mm, this is what I do because, you know, my daddy's Dion. But but Travis is like, I'm meeting LeBron. I just met LeBron James. You know, that, that, you know so you see that genuine joy. Yeah. Cormani McLean was an all-state level player at Lake Gibson, went to the state semifinals, and then as a senior transfers to Lakeland High School, a rival of Lake Gibson in this, I mean, the same area. And you're sitting here saying, well, why are you transferring as a senior when you've been at a school for three years or whatever, and you've had, you've had success? Why would you do that? So he does this, and that to me is a red flag. As a, to me, to me, the transferring in high schools is a red flag. When you transferred three times, um, it, yeah, you got guys transfer four times. I mean, nowadays, but they transfer like crazy. So it's a red flag. But it's, I mean, I don't think he transferred three times, twice. But he, but to transfer as a senior when you've actually had a really good career, high school career, and you're the number one corner in the country, why are you transfer? Let alone why you transfer to a rival. It's just it's like going from central to northwestern, which I'll never understand how anyone can do that. And it's just weird to me. Never get it. Now, he flips to Colorado from Miami. Doesn't even have the decency to really let anyone know, just does it social media wise. I'm sure maybe they gave Mario Cristobal a call, but people in Miami that I know cover Miami, they did not know that Cormani was gonna flip. They still thought he'd sign and so forth. And he goes to Colorado. Now, the type of kid that I've seen him to be just from social media, he looks like a high school kid who'd never been told no in his life. And I think that's what happened to Colorado. Yet you would think Dion would be the guy that could tell him no and he'd understand why and, 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 and potentially get that, look, you're playing for the number one cornerback that ever played football. And he's going to teach you. He barely plays early on. And I would say, I think it was like by week three or four or five, something like that. I'm like, this kid's going to transfer. Because the number one corner in the country expects to play, not sit the bench. That said, I think midway through the season, he started a few games in a row. In fact, there was video where he was being congratulated by Dion for playing a great game. But what happened when he was on the field, for the most part, he was burnt toast. He was getting smoked. Over and over and over and over again. And all you saw, and that's one of the things that I see with high school players, they get away with a get away with being long, athletic, and fast. Sorry, if your technique sucks, you're not gonna be successful. If you don't know how to do the things that cornerbacks like Nick do, you're gonna have problems. Rudy. And I'm sorry to cut you off. If you don't ahead. fucking learn to watch film and study the game, like, 
you will get killed, man. I I didn't get good in football until I learned the game, learn how to watch film. I didn't I didn't learn, know how to watch film my first few years until I got to Winnipeg and I got to a coach named Coach J.Y. and my teammate named Brandon Alexander who were film junkie. And they knew how to learn, how to watch the game, how to pick up on clues, how to not overexert myself by just playing with my athleticism because I ran a fucking 4-2, which I was still getting beat by players. And I'm like, why? I'm fast as hell. No, because... Just because I run a 4-2, I can get away with certain things. But to be good and great, I needed to know tips and clues. Because even though I run a 4-2, if I don't know what's coming, I can't really use it because I'm playing behind the, the fucking eight ball every fucking time. And now I'm hoping that I can make up with my speed rather than just making up with my knowledge and not having to exert so much energy or, you know, just skills where I can just be there already because I know what's coming now. I can really be really, really good because I can put the 4-2 with my fucking knowledge of the game, and now I'm a baller. But I, I just want to interrupt on that part. But go ahead. That's important for people to understand. Like, it's not a talent position. It's a skill position. You can be fast as hell, but if you can't, don't know how to, te- don't know leverage and technique. How to use you're it. Gonna, you're going to get killed because these re- wide receivers are going to absolutely embarrass you. But when you see he so he so he so he played a few games he started a few games and and they go into the spring and they go through spring ball and now they have this post spring ball transfer portal it's like as if, as if they don't have enough transfer portal stuff going on in the fall in the early spring now you can transfer after spring football I don't get this college football is a mess to me at this point that you can go through spring ball. And then people just start transferring left and right because they didn't play enough in the spring or they didn't get enough reps in their mind. Or, I'm not, quite frankly, they're, chance, they're I don't have the chance to be the starter. I'm out. <laughs> like I, if I if I'm not start if I'm not guaranteed a starting spot, I quit. It is a bunch. There are a bunch of quitters today. Th- these kids are being raised by parents of their enabling ass parents who are relying on these kids to make their 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 lives so that they don't have to work anymore, which I think is pathetic in itself. But you you don't you don't know how to overcome adversity. There's no adversity here. I, if I don't start right now, it's a problem. If I'm not my ass is not kissed, it's a problem. And I'm sick and tired of seeing this shit. But I knew this guy was going to transfer midseason. There was no doubt in my mind. When you flip flop on somebody, literally the day and don't tell any, the day of signing day and don't tell anybody, and you go ghost MIA. And then next thing you know, oh, he's committed to he's signing with Colorado. Like, bro, his mother says in a tweet, gotta be somewhere where you're appreciated and not just tolerated. God take the lead, we right behind you. Get the freaking hell out of here with that hot basura. It is garbage. Tolerated, not appreciated. Grow up. Teach your kids some freaking. I, I mean. This is where it goes back to parenting. This is a parenting issue. No, yeah. There are, I, there, I remember, God, I think it was Charles Barkley said that he wanted to leave Auburn after his freshman year. And his mama or grandma said, don't come back home type thing. Like, you take your ass back to school. Like, you make a commitment. And I get it. It's different. The world is different. It's not like he's getting, not getting broke off a boatload of money over there to be there. He didn't go to Colorado to be coached. He got there to get paid more, probably. And, and, and I'm not, that's my presumption. Um, but then, so yeah, I have a big problem, this continued entitled attitude of these diva athletes. You're a five-star, and, and guess what happened this week? His own high school coach threw him under the bus. Told us that, I don't know why Auburn would want him. He's a problem. He's a problem. When your high school coach says, after you're gone, He's a night. He's basically a nightmare to deal with. There's something there. There's something there. And Deion Sanders probably saw that. It's a shame that he didn't get to coach him and and work with him. And that's where I also think some. This is I'll go into this stuff with Deion later on and some of the other stuff that he's done and said in the past week. That's just completely out of line in my opinion. But in this particular case, I understand. And I think it's a shame that this young man won't play for Dion, even though I 
I'm yeah. not a fan of Dion. We all know yeah. this. Mm-hmm. But I think he could have benefited a great deal if he actually acted like an adult. And his mother said, no, you stay right there with that guy. Because that guy's going to teach you to play the position that you want to play and you want to be a pro. He's going to teach you better than anyone else. He may not be able to coach an offensive lineman, a running back, a quarterback, or any other position, but he can coach cornerbacks. And you're a 6'3", 175-pound cornerback. He can teach you if you listen. But this goes back to these kids being told, yes, 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 their whole lives and never hearing, buddy, you got to earn this shit. And, you know, Rudy always say that I'm this new school approach. I just like to view shit from an overall perspective. And then I, and I, and I change my mind as things go on. But these kids are soft as fuck. And I fucking can't stand it, man. Cause that's not how I grew up. And I never had a problem with being coached fucking hard. Because if I'm getting coached hard, I know the coach care about me. He wants me to be good. Wouldn't that coach stop fucking talking to you? It's a fucking problem. That means he don't care about you. But when that coach is on you and riding you, no, did he? When he's on you and riding you, that means he's caring. He wants you to do great. He sees something in you. When he sees something in you, that means he's putting his time. He cares because he knows you can do so much more and go further. Because he knows he's been around the landscape a long time to see this type of shit. But a lot of these kids and their parents are in neighbors. Oh, no, 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 no. Because sometimes, you know, a lot of this shit stems from because their parents wasn't fucking good enough back then and they felt like they got shafted and they weren't just fucking good enough. So they want to take the blame and bring it to their kids and, and, and say, oh, because my kid's getting treated probably how I got treated. No, you fucking sucked. And now you, your kid is fucking good and you're trying to ride that fucking coattail to another fucking level. But if you don't make your kid tough enough and strong enough for the real world, my fucking word is adapt in life, man. If you can't adapt in fucking life to all the circumstances, you won't go nowhere, man. If you stop your kid from learning how to adapt, then he won't go or she won't go nowhere because this shit's all about adapting and adjusting because nothing's going to be however you fucking thought it was. Nothing in life that goes that way. And these kids in college, man, they are benefiting from this new fucking age I don't even know how the commissioner and shit let it go just because the college coaches could go different places and things in that nature without being fucking reprimanded about it. They said, oh, we can let everybody else go. I'll say, if that's okay, once a coach goes somewhere, I'm okay with, with, with kids going different places. But if they're not going anywhere and you committed to that coach, you should have to wait out a fucking year. I have no problem with that rule what it was before. You should have to wait out a year because that's what you committed to. You should go there at least for one fucking year and wait out another year before you go to another D1 school. Because that's what it should be because you should be. There have always been fucking, like, if you have, there always is, when, if you do something and it don't go your way, it's a fucking problem. Like, it's always you have to deal with that shit. You can't just go to the next fucking thing, dog. And I don't like how it's, how it's being handled nowadays. This fucking sucks, man. The University of Miami, they still shafted me in 1995. I got screwed, man. You? I didn't get a... Uh, <laughs> I didn't get my football scholarship to Miami. I'm still pissed. Donald's <laughs> fucking looking at me like crazy. Like. I feel... I feel. I, I, I mean, my God, the love I had for that... I'm kidding. But, yeah, that's... It's exhausting. And I've told my kids this. I've said... The day a coach stops coaching you, he gave up on you. Yeah. He gave up on you. I don't know if you remember when we were doing travel ball and we were in Orlando and and, and I made T.Y. cry in a game. He came yeah. off and he went to the end of the bench and started crying. T.Y. Hilton. I love you, T.Y. Hilton. You were, I lo- your loyalty transcends, man. And your family's loyalty transcends because you could have gone anywhere after that first year. But you stayed with us, team in the zone, for the entirety of your high school career. And I'll never forget that. But T.Y. Hilton, when he was 14 years old, he was all county at Miami Springs. He turned that entire high school program around. And there was expectations, but he was still 14. And when we played, and he was playing 17U. It's a different animal. You know that. It's just a different animal because in high school, you're not just 17, you're 17, 16, 15, whatever. But he was a badass in high school. And he he but he also thought that he should take every single shot there was, if you remember. And when he didn't take that shot, he was upset. And I got on him. And because I knew how good he was. And, you know, it, it's one of those things where, and I tell, you know, told him, like, if, I, if I'm not yelling at you, I don't like you no more. The day I stop, the day I stop yelling, 
at you. Give up. Bye. Rudy Bye. Best. Rudy Best stop yelling at me on that team. Bye. He didn't care about me no more. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> But that's it. I mean, I, I just wish these kids would actually show some levels of adversity. And you know what happened in Miami too? A bunch of guys left. But you know, these kids they all they all leave, and it's just it's it's so old. Because you mentioned the penalty. The penalty for coaches is that they have to pay. There has to be their buyouts. Now the schools typically pay them who are hiring them, but it's still a penalty for in in a, in a sense. And yeah, I, I have no problem with guys leaving, but this crap where guys are leaving. Coming and going, transfer, transfer in in the spring, transfer out when spring ball ends. That actually happened. Can you imagine transferring somewhere in January and transferring in in April? That's crazy. That's absurd. But that's all I, I got, Don. I don't like the way I don't like where college football is going. <laughs> um, they might as well just just it's about to be a shit show, man. <laughs> Might as well let these kids do whatever the fuck they want after high school. They they're gonna have to change the rules back, man. Because no, of, of course they do. Because the, they even, got less rules than NFL players. You don't even know who you're rooting for anymore. Because like Rudy said, your kid could be there for the first week of the game of the season, and by the second week, he transferred to a fucking different school just because he didn't like the way coaching them playing the first game. He took me out in the second quarter. I'm out. You're out, a motherfucker. Work. There's something called working for it, man. It's, but you'll find the benefits of it because a lot of coaches don't like dealing with that shit, man. Once you're not good in, once you, you, you're you fucking with my team chemistry and things of that nature, man, I'm okay. You can go, man. But a lot of these coaches, a lot of these kids aren't coachable, man. And it, it changed right. the landscape, dog. It's crazy. Yeah. 